everyone, welcome back to Royalty Soaps. So today I'm going to be making the Dark Kisses soap, and I haven't made this since I was in my other studio. That's how long it's been. It is fragrance using Pink Sugar Type by Nature's Garden. This smells like Pink Sugar by Aqualina. It is really, really potent stuff. It smells so, so good, and it discolors to a very dark brown, almost black. So to counter out that discoloration, this is the only soap that the primary color is black. And then I will have two accent colors, hot pink and white, and then the piping is going to be like the hottest pink I've ever done. I'm gonna try to make it super, super vivid. So the first thing that we do here is pour our lye water solution into our oils. The lye water solution consists of distilled water and sodium hydroxide. The recipe that I'm using today can be found in the description box below, and the soap frosting recipe comes with the Royalty Soaps piping set available at NurtureSoap.com. So let's blend this up real quick. Great, so now I'm going to pour off these two colors here. This will be the pink and this will be the white. And of course I'm not adding fragrance oils to either one of these because I don't want it to discolor. So the white of course is titanium dioxide mixed with water. And then the pink is from TKB Trading. I will leave a link. Look at this. This is some crazy pink. Yeah, I'll leave a link to it down in the description box below. This is the only pink that I use for soap when it comes to wanting a vivid hot pink because it's the only hot pink colorant I've ever found that really, really stays vibrant. So let's go ahead and blend these. I'm going to go ahead now and scrape down the sides of these containers. Had I continued to mix them, it would have been fully incorporated, but I'm trying to let these stay a little bit more liquidy, so I don't want to mix too much. So now it's time to incorporate the black colorant. So I'm going to be using black oxide that has been mixed with a little bit of activated charcoal. And then if that is not enough, I will add some black pearl mica from Nurture Soap. So let's see what we think of just the black oxide with the activated charcoal. So while normally this black isn't as pigmented as I want it to be, I think it's going to work because the fragrance oil I'm working with already discolors. So I think it's gonna take this, this kind of medium shade of black and turn it a lot darker. So I'm gonna add my fragrance oil now and then we'll start pouring into the molds. This fragrance oil, it's bringing back like so many memories for me. It's so nostalgic. So I poured in a good bit of the black there. So now I'm gonna pour the white up from really high. I waited to start pouring this until it's set up a little bit because I want the white and the pink to really stand out and not get too blended in with the black. I'm gonna pour some more black in right down the middle. And then I'm gonna go ahead and pour the rest of the white and the pink in. And as you can see, the white and the pink are far more runny than the black is, and that's because they don't have any fragrance oil in them. And the black has all of the fragrance oil in it. So I'm gonna go ahead and tap these on the floor. And then I'm going to scrape out these buckets and put all the rest on top and we'll move on to the hot, hot, hot pink piping. <laughs> My piping has set up completely now, so you can see this pink, it's, it's, it's a hot pink, but it's not like a super vivid hot pink. But this piping, you guys, it's hot pink. I'm using the Royalty Soaps piping set with the closed star tip today. I'm just going to put three across. I, I don't think I have ever worked <laughs> with soap piping quite this vivid before. This feels very, very daring for me. Now this frosting is a little bit runny still, but I wanted to pipe the first layer just so that I made sure it stuck really, really well because the bottom half has been sitting for quite a while and getting pretty hard. So the runnier your piping is, obviously, the better it will stick to the bottom. So I'm just gonna pipe this first layer while it's still a bit soft. 
soft and then I'll wait for it to set up a little more before I pipe the second part of it. All the soaps that you see me make between September 15th and October 15th will be for my autumn collection. I already have all of them picked out and prepared. It's going to be a really, really good autumn. I don't think I've ever made this many fall soaps before. And then all the soaps made between October 15th and November 15th will be for the December soap release and my Christmas collections. The next two months will be focusing on fall and winter holidays. And then in December, um, normally I spend most of that time packaging stuff out and then I take my break until the new year, but it could be that I do a few little DIY projects. I like to release some DIY projects during the winter months, but I don't know what life is going to be like um, around then, so we'll just have to see what I can handle this year. Okay, so I'm gonna wait a little while to fill in the cracks here and add the final layer of frosting on top until the frosting has set up a little bit more. So I waited a little while longer to put the top on, but I'm not gonna lie, I didn't wait near as long as I should have. <laughs> so now I'm going to put some intergalactic glitter on top. This is from Notre Soap. It actually comes with the Royalty Soaps piping set. And we're going to put a healthy dose of that on top because my embeds also have this glitter in it. Oh my goodness, so much glitter. This is holographic glitter, by the way. It's not silver, it's got like rainbows in it. Now that I put that on, I have taken some bath salts. These I have colored in black oxide, and I'm just gonna use those as some sprinkles on the top because my embeds are also black. Just trying to tie it in a little bit with the bottom half of the soap. So I'm not using a whole, whole bunch, just a little tiny bit. Okay, so now I can put the embeds on the very tippy top. So these are some hearts that I have. And again, I've used some glitter in there and we're just gonna stick those again on the top. I am gonna push it in on the sides a little bit for the end pieces. Not really going on the top for the ends, so I'm always having to push that piping up because sometimes it likes to slip right off the side. I'll just put these all the way down the soap, making sure that I'm getting them in the middle of the bar. And I am trying to squish them in a little bit because I don't want whenever I cut this with my multi-bar cutter for the tops to get scraped off because they're too tall for the cutter. So I'm gonna put all of these in, then I'm gonna spritz the top with rubbing alcohol, and I'll show you guys a close-up. And here's what they look like all close up. Man, look at that pink. I don't think the camera's like truly capturing how pink that is, but whenever I list these on September 15th, in the Etsy shop at 12 p.m. Central. We will have a picture on there that I think better represents that color because it is popping. Okay, so I'm gonna let these sit in the mold for about 18 to 24 hours and then we'll come back and chop them all up. Alrighty, so we are back to cut this soap. It has been sitting for quite some time now, maybe two or three days. I just really wanted to give this piping on top a good long time to harden up. And as you can see, since I pushed those hearts in good enough, they aren't going to be smashed by the cutter. I left that little tank in, somebody said <laughs> on one of the previous videos that they were sad that I cut it out. So there you go, I left it in for you. So this is what the inside looks like when it's freshly cut. That's actually not a super good swirl. Let me try to find one that has like a better swirl in it. Here we go, that's a bit better. And you can see these little teeny tiny thin lines. Well, whenever the black part of the soap was setting up and setting up much quicker than the white and the pink, that's what makes these teeny tiny little swirls because the pink and the white are still really liquid so they create sort of marbled look within the thick soap. Now I've already cut the other loaf about two days ago just so that I could show you the comparison. So this is one that has been sitting for a while. As you can see the color is slightly different. Not very much but slightly, slightly different and it has developed just a few speckles again because of the vanillin. It's really hard to see because the soap is so dark in and of itself but also 
also here's a really good example of the what the swirl looks like when you're swirling in a color that is already thickening these soaps will be available on september 15th at 12 p.m central time so if you'd like one be sure to set your alarms because my cold process soaps go pretty stinking fast so i'm having to do the question of the today all by myself because caleb's not in here but the question is would you rather know the history of everything you touched or be able to talk to animals to me this is kind of a no-brainer i don't want to know the history of everything i touch i think that sounds like an exhausting like existence i would much rather be able to talk to animals but that's just me personally and i want to know what you guys think so if you want to vote in this poll you can click the i in the upper right hand corner of the screen to cast your vote i'll be really interested to see what you guys say if you enjoyed this video please give it a big thumbs up subscribe to the channel maybe even leave me a comment down below and then I will see you guys on September 15th where I will upload the final soap making video for all of the cold process soaps that are being released on that day so until then bye for now